What's up, folks? Just gonna shoot a couple of shots while people are logging on. I'm meaning to do this one for a while. Hanging out at the shop today. Not a whole lot going on this last hour. Figured I'd shoot some blind bail. <clears throat> so I know you guys don't want to stand it. Sit here and watch me shoot by and bail. Well, I may a couple times. We got we got Ryan, Joe, Jeff, Mike Colson, I don't know who else. Um, but I wanted to I've been meaning to do this live feed because there is um there's this idea in some places with barebow that blind bail doesn't have a ton of carryover. Um, you know, and, and I'm watching guys like Bradley Thompson from Point On Archery, and I, obviously I've watched um, Maggie shoot, gosh, for two years or a year and a half now, um, and watched the, the improvements, and I was listening to, um, if you guys, make sure you check out the push and their coverage of the Barebow Boot Camp, because, um, you know, Matt's putting out some awesome stuff, Matt and Tim. But regardless of that, um, I was listening to the uh, the BS session between Mick Chambers, um, Bradley, and Matt. And Bradley was I know Bradley's been doing a lot of blind bail, and he's doing like the periodization thing. And he said that he's shooting with an incredible amount of control. And I think there's this idea that like people, I don't know if people understand that blind bail isn't just willy-nilly shooting with your eyes closed that's not what it is and i wanted to take like five minutes ten minutes and talk about like the process of shooting blind bail and you know oftentimes the day before a tournament i will do just blind bail and that's it and here's why when i train for a tournament or I have something going on. Blind Bill does a whole lot more than just shoot shots at close yardage with your eyes closed. It's when you close your eyes. It's going through the whole, whole process. Um, it allows you to reinforce the motor movements, the, the, the performance points of the archery shot without any negative implication. You just do it the right way over and over and over again. And the one thing that, that I have learned, um, you know, and this is, comes from compound and Olympic recurve more than anything, is the more times you do it right, the easier it's going to be to do it right when it matters. Um, so that's what we use blind bell for. But, you know, you have to understand how to do it, I think. And that's what this live feed's about. So a couple of things about what I do um, it allows you to practice setting your hook. It allows you to practice setting your finger pressure with your hook and verifying that it feels the same. So it's a repeatability thing. You know, the other thing that happens is, you know, you are to you're allowed to or it helps you focus on that good tension versus bad tension. You know, bad target panic feeds off of bad bad tension. And if you when you're at full draw with your eyes closed, your other senses come into play. You can feel when, you know, your alignment's not quite right. You can feel when your bow arm isn't real super steady. And I know a lot of times when we're shooting, um, 
competition, you know, if I get a little panicky or, you know, if my aim goes kind of the crap, you'll see me, you'll see my bow arm do one of these. And I go back to that Olympic recurve. That's an exaggeration, but um, you'll see that the bow arm isn't super steady. You, know, you watch guys like John or Grayson or a couple of guys that have been shooting nothing but bare bow for a long time. You know, that bow arm does not move. And the one super, super important thing that DISA helps me with is what exactly the, um, the entire shot should feel like. It just takes the aim out. But it doesn't entirely. And here's why. When I draw back and get the full draw, I still pick a spot and I aim. But once I close my eyes, I visualize what it's like. I visualize the shot. I visualize like the tip of the arrow is still floating in the middle of the target. What's also nice is that when you do close your eyes and you can focus on the feel of what your hook is like, you can really focus on letting that string pull through your fingers. And um, we talked about on the seminar for the coach symposium, we were talking about, um, and I'm going to butcher this, Park Sun Hyun, I think is how you say it. Um, if you just Google search Archie Slow Motion, you know, and, and I can post that in the comments afterwards and watch her shoot. Her release is amazing. Like if, if there was a release that I could duplicate, Brady's is good. Hers is better. If I could duplicate a release and find a way to duplicate a release, like if you think there's one thing I'm going to be working on from now until, in, until indoor season like officially starts, specifically the classic, that's the thing I'm going to be working on. I thought my release was decent, but... The one, and one of the reasons I do blind bail so much is that even on my shots where my aim maybe wasn't great or I was a little too impatient, if I, have a, if I still run the pattern and hit the, the same release um, with my, with my follow-through and I just finish that shot like I always do, if I hit that even though my aim wasn't good, a lot, nine times out of ten, that arrow is going to end up better because of it. Um, because my release was better. I'll show you what I mean. The other thing I want to talk about is what I look for. So, my d release is defined as index finger drag across my cheek. That's part of it. Allowing my hand to come straight back. One thing that's important is that I know my alignment is good. If I know my alignment is good when my hand is coming straight back, it's absolutely positively like effortless. It just comes back. When I start to lean too much, if I get fatigued or if my mind isn't in the right spot and I'm not thinking about those things, man, you start to get like these little pops. They pop off my face. And if you you know, and there's a lot, I mean, watch people shoot. And there's not a lot of bare bow, like slow motion bare bow videos out there. But just watch people shoot and watch their release. And a lot of times, nine times out of ten, maybe ten times out of ten, if a shooter is here, hold on, I might have to move this camera and show you. If a shooter's release First thing that happens, it pops off the face. Chances are their alignment is off. Just because the tip of the elbow is in line with the arrow does not mean that the alignment is on. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Hopefully you can see it from this, from this angle. Um, watch my hand. Automatic. Pops straight out. All I did was move my head in. I moved my head into the string. And cut my alignment short. I really should show you that from from behind. I always talk about not moving the head, and that's one of the reasons why. Because if you have the ability, first of all, it creates tension in your neck and everywhere else. And again, that's bad tension. But um, you move that head forward, and that really that this that tip of the elbow is gonna come around like this. Then the hand pops off the face, 
pops off the face because you never got into alignment. So the alignment has to finish first. Well, if you let go, you can't come straight back without bending the wrist. Well, the, the goal is for the wrist and everything to be straight, hands as vertical as possible. Well, you have to finish the rotation. You have to finish the alignment in order for you to finish the shot. And that stuff pops off. So I'm gonna show you again. I said about, um, about getting the hand vertical or as vertical as possible when you make the hook. Slide the fingers into your hook. I'll back up a little bit. And when I, when I go and set my hook, I set my pressure on my index and my middle finger and I deliberately turn my hand and try to get it as vertical as possible. And just drag that back, hold the bow arm, and run through. You notice my head doesn't move after the shot. My head doesn't move much coming into anchor, very, very minimal. Um, and, I mean, there's just, gosh, there's so many pieces to blind bail. And people think, and I don't think that, I think it's not that um, people don't know about it. I just don't think they realize how much actually goes into shooting the blind bail shot. And that's the stigma that needs to change with using it. Perfect your release. Drive the message home in your brain what your release is supposed to feel like so that when you are competing, you can fall back on that. Drive home the message of what your bow arm is supposed to feel like so that when you're competing, you can fall back on it. Um, and more importantly, the feel, you're driving home the feel of the entire shot and then combine that with doing draw holds. When you do those draw holds, combine it with the feel of letting the tip of the arrow float where it needs to float. Meanwhile, maintaining your stability at full draw and enabling you to expand just that little bit, um, letting the float happen. You'll notice, you will notice, and this is why I always, when people are dealing with really bad instances of target panic, when they're dealing with that, and why I always say to fall back on your form and reaffirm that your form is right, because your body will allow you to hold so much better with the tip of the arrow in the middle, hold on a second, in the middle of the target, when your body is able to hold the pressure or the tension of the bow at full draw, and you don't have to engage as many muscles. Your body is supposed to do that, not your muscles. The bone on bone contact is supposed to do that, not your muscles. If you're having a hard time with target panic, you're unable to get the tip of the arrow to the middle of the target, check your alignment and your form first. When you do those things, you fall back on the proper patterns, be in the proper positions, things will get easier, I promise. Watch it happen time and time and time again. And the other thing when it comes to target panic, and we can talk about this as well, you know, when you have a shot process that you count on, if you know the utmost confidence in your shot process that you can shoot an arrow in the middle the way you want it to make it comfortable, to shoot confident, when you have that like literally written down and defined, when you know exactly every minimal step that you have to take, that's when you will find out that the pressure and the stress of shooting in competition and shooting in eliminations, that's when that goes away. That's when it's easier to deal with that stuff because your process is so defined and you're so into, well, fly, repeating that shot. You don't have time to think about the other stuff. I mean, that's, that's really the, the, the best coping mechanism for, for, um, for shooting target panic is making sure that your shot is as bulletproof as possible and then not allowing your brain to think outside of what the process is that gets you there. I hope that makes sense and I hope that you guys, I've been meaning to do this live feed for a while and um, providing there's no issues, I will um, save it to my phone and upload it to YouTube. But like the process of shooting blind bail isn't just it's a, it's a surefire way to get volume into your training and doing it correctly. 
all right i hope so you know if your goal is to shoot 200 arrows for the week and half of those arrows are blind bail then half of those arrows are shot really really well done relatively quickly and you're able to get that volume in but get maximum um carryover for the long-term goal of your shooting that's a no-brainer we can't all shoot 50 meters and shoot 200 arrows a day that will take forever but you could shoot instead of shooting 100 arrows at 50 meters you could take half the amount of time probably a quarter of the amount of time shoot 100 blind bail and those shots are going to be absolutely perfect so where what's going to have more carryover in your training yeah morning coffee at 5 p.m it's going to be that it's going to be just that i hope it like again i wanted to bring this up i wanted people to be able to see it talk about it um and understand what blind bail is and that why it's significant to use it so um, i'm going to scroll back through real quick and just see if there's any questions um having my second morning coffee and seeing this just before hitting the range nice man um Joe McGlynn comment something I thought, but I may have missed it. Marcel, thank you, Mike Holson. Um, morning from Australia, howdy, Maggie. Um, so Mike Holson said, what is bad tension? And instead of um, not just, I will go into bad tension. I'll do that right now. I'll do it qu as quick as possible. I'll run through just a couple I can think off the top of my head. And if you can relate to these things, then there's a good chance that you have an alignment issue. Um, bad tension could be in a couple of places. I'm going to show you a close-up. Uh, yeah, that's good. Um, of bad tension. Very simple one. One that I see a lot. Hmm. I might have to move the camera. No, we'll be all right. So... Bad tension in the bow hand. Couple of things that you guys should should pay attention to. Your thumb or your fingers. This, I want you to look at my, mm, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I want you to look at my thumb on this shot. Watch my thumb. Bad tension, good tension. Bad tension, look at my forearm. Good tension, bad, good. Makes a huge carryover. That in itself is a huge carryover. And a lot of times we don't even realize that we do it because you shoot that way for so long that that little, now I was exaggerating obviously so you could see it, but even the little little tiny bit amount of tension in that hand um, makes, tar makes, makes us panicky. Um, and then the same, same goes for I'll do it this way so you can see it for the, the bow hand itself. And this is one that I actually yell at Maggie about, oh, oh battery, um, pretty often is this. I see this a lot. So here's my grip from beginning to end. But I see this. This or hold on. Here's another one see people get out way outside you see this a lot well like oh yeah that looks like a great grip no it's not it's a, just a bunch of fingers that are curled up and there's nothing but tension there set the hand with zero tension before you draw back set your hook set your grip stand up straight boom you're set that's the position you got to get to that position first before you draw back once you go through all that on you set your grip it's relaxed pre-draw pre-draw starts early everything's relaxed look how far back i didn't even start pulling yet look how far back i am another way that people oftentimes create bad tension it's moving their head um whether it, if you move forward a lot of times it brings your elbow out and i will show you that one quick See how far my head came out from my shoulders? Try it. Try it the next time you go shoot. 
set your hook, go through your process, set your grip, and stand up really, really straight, like, and squeeze your butt cheeks together. Sounds weird? I do it on every shot. And when you go into your pre-draw, don't let your head move and draw back. And see how much further you end up drawing the bow. And the other thing that you see, and, and bad tension is a loss in tension as well, which it just, it counteracts. And there are some shooters out there that overdraw significantly and are still able to shoot pretty good, um, without a doubt. There's, there, it's definitely, per, me personally, I have a little tiny, I don't, I don't have an overdraw, I come, I come in, and when I get in my anchor, you can see me set the back tension. Um, your last movement, I don't care how you do it, is, I don't care how you get in alignment, but make sure that your last movement in some way, some way, shape, or form is going that way, away from the target, that your back is set and engaged. And I'm gonna show you what I mean where the no-no is, at least as far as the way I teach it, is this. That way overdraw. Did you see also see how my elbow came up like this? You, lo you lost all your back tension. There's people that shoot well that way. I'm not saying that it's not, that some people can't do it. Um, however, I think the long-term repeatability of it is not as as high as it would be to simplify it get rid of that keep your head set when i say head set that means chin parallel to the floor and just get there hope that makes sense as well um other bad tension is letting the shoulder creep up um another i see this a lot when people set their crawl here and they do this whole thing and then start way down here and try to and go do one of these, you end up leaning back. You're just out of posture. Um, always start center gravity, good posture, head between the shoulders, um, shoulders back and down. Um, and again, like all these little things, you'll start to recognize that uh, draw holds, for example, and this is about blind bail, but draw holds will identify a lot of times when the, when the alignment is out. And the reason that they identify that is because you have a hard time holding a draw hold for 30, 45, 60 seconds. Um, so when you find that all of a sudden that's hard, well, 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 why is that? If the light bulb doesn't go off in your head, well, I got to fix that. I don't know what to do for you. But you want to try to you definitely want to try to address those issues blind bail is one of the most priceless and um easy to do training things that every single archer should do it does not matter what your discipline is that is not different for barebow so i'm just gonna look back through and see if there's any other questions if not i am shutting her down Lots of gems here. Bad tension needs to be its own video. I think you're right, Carla. That was a big topic of discussion in the um, symposium the other night. Um, uh, let's see, Joe. Let them know if your thumb is relaxed, natural, not straight. Bad tension also. Um, Joe, uh, just make sure we're on the same page. Are you talking about the bow hand thumb or are you talking about the release hand thumb? Um, Oh, I will talk about the release hand thumb though. So your thumb has a job at the anchor. And again, blind bail allows you to, um, blind bail allows you to practice this. I make a C, my C. Now this comes from my Olympic recurve days because when I shot Olympic recurve, um, I would anchor, I would come back and anchor like this. And this, this C that I make, the thumb, put, comes in kind of against my neck, up underneath my jaw, and that would allow me to a couple of things. Okay, I got you, I got you, Joe. Um, the C helps me keep my hand vertical, which with your hand vertical, 
the string wants to go away. So when you, when the string is able to go away and your fingers come straight back off, there's no deviation left and right. Think about it. What's going to be easier to duplicate? Letting the string go straight or doing this every time because every time that you are following through this way without being out of alignment, it pulls the string to the right, if you're a right-handed shooter, just a little bit. So you have to repeat that every single time in order to be effective downrange. Listen, you can get away with that at 18 meters. You definitely can. I'm not, I'm not gonna say, I don't think you're gonna shoot a 570 that way ever. Um, I don't think you're gonna shoot a 560 that way ever, but I think that you could probably shoot 520 or 530 maybe even. Um, but you wanna be as repeatable and forgiving as possible. So the idea is for that to come straight back. Well, even with the bare bow anchor, which is why I always go corner on my mouth, um, my thumb is more of an anchor than even my index finger is. As long as I don't move my head and I hook in the exact same spot, this whole shelf of my thumb right here sits right against my jawbone. Everybody has different facial features. Everybody has different size hands. And I was going to be able to do that. But if you can, I recommend trying it. Um, and then what Joe, Joe was talking about is the, the thumb on the bow hand in its natural position is just straight and relaxed. So I'm going to move a little bit closer. So that's right there is a completely relaxed thumb. It should, it's just relaxed and points kind of straight, but it actually has a little bit of a curvature to it. It's kind of like your fingers on the grip. When you set your, when you relax these fingers, and they just kind of fall, you know there's no tension in those fingers. If you are this way, there's tension. If you, you know, if you have something straight, there's tension. Um, and that's, that's what's hard to recognize. I remember the first time I, I worked on it and I was like, holy crap, I didn't realize how much tension I had in my out, outer thumb. And I think that actually came from years of shooting compound, probably shooting too high a poundage and you get used to stabilizing on the outside part of the hand and the thumb in order to pull back the bow. It's just a bad habit that was picked up. Um, and then when you, st it's hard, what's hard is that when you start to use that tension, when you draw back, what's hard is getting rid of it once you've already established it. And uh, it's not any different than any other part of the archery shot. So, all right, guys, I think that's it. I'm, I'm gonna bounce. My phone's about to, ready to die and I gotta shut down the shop because I'm the only one here. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, and I will definitely put this on YouTube um, under one of the coaching blogs. So, you guys can reference it and go back to it and, and hopefully this helps you get through some of your issues. All right. Peace out people.